Over half a million animals every year in America are surrendered for rental or housing reasons listed. Of those animals, 35% of them will be euthanized awaiting their forever home. If we look at what all of those cases have in common, it's simple. It comes down to unfair rental laws. 72% of renters claim to have pets, and while many rentals say they are pet friendly, there's actually deceitful laws hidden in the rental agreement, usually to the tune of weight restriction and or no aggressive breeds. Around 200,000 dogs and cats are euthanized simply because a family faces the grim decision of keeping their pet or finding a suitable housing situation. 200,000 may be a difficult number to fathom, so let me help you with that. Nearly three full football stadiums worth of animals find their life cut short simply because they weigh too much or because there's an archaic stigma surrounding their breed. Most aggressive breeds in lists include, but are not limited to, Akitas, Bulldogs, Cane Corsos, Chows, Doberman Pinchers, German Shepherds, Great Danes, Malamutes, Mastiffs, Pitbulls, Rottweilers, Siberian Huskies, Staffordshire Terriers, and Wolf Hybrids. To date, the most common recorded breed to bite, inflict a bite wound to a human is a Chihuahua. This breed is not found on the aggressive list and falls under the typical 25 pound weight limit. Yikes. There go that goes to show that these rental laws that once set out to keep the public safe are not doing their job. So how do we revise the laws to accomplish this daunting task of public safety? There are several states who have recognized this shortcoming. States like Washington, Nebraska, and Missouri have implemented alternative pet requirements to keep people safe and keep their pets in loving homes. The legislation judges pets on individual behavior instead of discriminatory breed and weight standards. These laws require that each pet must be ha pass a behavioral test, be properly vaccinated, and some may require that owners have renter's insurance. Let's look at this in practice. In a state with a typical legislation, a family that has a pit bull mixed dog, say they've had it from puppyhood to around five years old, and it has never shown aggressive behavior, they set out to move. Despite their dog's good nature, the family struggles to find a place to live simply because of their dog's breed. This family then will be faced with that great dilemma of paying additional fees or owning a dog that that's breed is considered aggressive. So now they're faced with a sacrifice. Do they keep their pet or do they find a living situation that's suitable? This family, family ultimately has to make a decision. The dog is surrendered. The same restriction that landed the dog in the shelter will ultimately be the same reason that dog is euthanized. That dog is met with the grim fate that too many other pets face every year. In a state with modified legislation, the same family will find ease in proving their dog's good nature. And then they will be able to find proper housing without making sacrifices. This keeps the family together, no one's safety is at jeopardy, and the pet gets to stay in its loving home. This legislation has the potential to change the way America owns pets. Many people are reluctant to own or adopt these breeds because of the difficulty that's involved with just owning them. Most of this modified legislation only went into effect January 1st of 2020, um, so annual statistics have yet to be published. However, Missouri has already begun documenting the changes and it's a profound effect. Adoption rates of pit bull type dogs has increased by nearly 3% and the surrender rate of animals is down approximately 10%. This reduced load has allowed shelters to better care for the animals that do end up in their care and ultimately becomes a win-win situation. It's hard to fathom a negative effect um, to this modified legislation, so how can we contribute to the expansion of it? Um, first, we can ditch the stereotypes. Next time you see an aggressive breed dog, embrace that pet with an open mind. 
Um, consider the family that love their pet and have put so much care into training them. See past the unrealistic standard. Uh, second, we need to promote this inclusive legislation. Um, we, need, we need Oregon to recognize that this is something necessary, especially with our competitive, competitive rental market. Um, so we need, as voters, we need to let our legislators know this is important um, and this is not something that's gone unnoticed. Uh, if you find yourself in a position where your pet is called into question, maybe try recommending these things like an alternate behavior test. Um, you know, show your vaccine record, show your vet record, show that you're a responsible pet owner. Um, offer a dog interview, create a dog resume, um, you know, really push those boundaries, challenge those stereotypes. Um, small actions like this every day are the key to shining light on a matter so grim.